Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to announce that the opening ceremony of the Eighth International Mount Bandai Symposium for Neuroscience starts now.
Please be seated and thank you for paying your attention to the stage. Professor Kinochi, the president of the ACE International from the Bandai Symposium, and Dr. Masahiro Shimiz, the vice president, and Masahi, Dr. Masahi, Dr. Sadayoshi Watanabe, the president of the Nice Pan Pacific Neurosurg Neurosurgery Congress, and Dr. Hiromi Goto, the vice president, will make a welcome speech. Dr. Kinochi, Dr. Shimizu, Dr. Watanabe, Dr. Uto, please come up to the stage. Please make a speech. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, participation of this symposium. So first of all, uh, on behalf of the president, I will make some uh, opening remarks. And thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we, I'd like to express my sincere uh, gratitude to the member of the honorary president uh, advisory board and uh, organizing committee and chairman and speakers uh, for your great contribution to organize this symposium. Uh, it is our great honor and privilege to host this meeting. And, and this meeting was initiated in Koryama by Professor Kazuo Watanabe, the founder of this symposium in 1999. Then 2003, the Mount, Mount Bandai Symposium and Pan Pacific Neurosurgical Congress was joined. The first president at the joint convention was uh, Dr. Tsuneo Shimizu from Kanto or Neurosurgical University, and the other Mount Pan Pacific uh, Convention's president was Dr. Kazuo Watanabe. So now, this is the sixth joint convention, and the president is their son, the Dr. Hiro Shibizu and Dr. Sadayoshi Iwatanabe. So the, their sons are succeeded their presidency. I'm very honored to host this meeting in this memorable meeting. And the uh, purpose of this meeting is to deepen the friendship through exchange the uh, uh, latest knowledge of uh, neuroscience and neurosurgery, and also uh, have fun to do uh, multiple uh, activities such as the golf or uh, see sports or sightseeing. So in this line of this purpose, we could have a, a, a full special lecture from uh, Professor Tominaga from Tokyo University and Professor Nakase from Nara Prefecture Medical University and Professor uh, Kawamata from Tokyo Women's uh, Hospital and Professor Saito from Tokyo University and also two honored guest special lecture uh, from Professor Did Machisen from University of Copenhagen and Professor John Chu uh, from University of Cincinnati. Uh, thank you very much for your, their contributions. And also we uh, plan a golf tournament on uh, February 2nd. So we really hope all the participants uh, enjoy this meeting and have an unmemorable uh, Nice memory. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for kind participation to this opening ceremony. Now the ceremony is closing and move to the scientific session. Symposium one: functional and spinal disorders. I call upon. Professor Nakase and Dr. Watanabe as the chairperson.
Good morning. I'll talk about our experience of repetitions procedure uh, under local anesthesia for INPH patients. As clinical research, Symphony 2 reveals that LP shunt is effective, similar to VP shunt, and it is less injurious. While general anesthesia is commonly selected for LP shunt, it can be performed under local anesthesia. We report our single center experience of LP shunt and under local anesthesia. We treated 372 patients with local anesthesia with modified neuroleptic analgesia from 2011 to 2017. The mean age of patients was 78 years old. Uh, this is the procedure of our uh, local anesthesia. Patient is in lateral position. Two operators stand back and abdominal side of patient. Intravenous diazepam and pentadocin injected. Uh, subcutaneous an anesthesia applied before skin incision. Local anesthesia of anterior and posterior fascia of an abdominal muscle also applied. Sensory receptors of pain are distributed in the skin and subcutaneous tissue and muscle fascia. So, after intravenous administration of diazepam and pentadocin, we inject lidocaine into these three areas and inject lidocaine into the anterior fascia of the abdominal muscle and apply lidocaine to the posterior fascia. These are key points for this procedure. Two operators are required on the back and abdominal side to shorten the operation time. We start the abdominal procedure as soon as after confirmation of the presence of Casita in the subarachnoid space. Because of suffering of the patient to maintain lateral position with almost alert wakefulness, we should finish operation within one hour. So we recommend uh, general anesthesia if it takes more than one hour. Nine patients were not finished LP shunt total procedure under local anesthesia, but no serious compl complications were ob observed during the operation. This table is the post operative complication of LP shunt under local anesthesia. Posture headache is the most frequently observed complication. Migration of abdominal placenta is decreased for these five years. And no serious complications were observed after, after operation. These are the summary of result. No serious intra and post-operative complications 
due to this anesthesia were observed. Local anesthesia required no powerful sedation or muscle re 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 relaxant because of the minimally invasive nature of a patient surgery. Short operation time is re required for a patient under local anesthesia. Because of a few sensory receptors of pain in the fat tissue, only skin subcutaneous tissues and muscle fascia are required local anesthesia. During surgery, one of the staff standing near the patient head to reduce fear and anxiety. The staff also encourage and sometimes holds patient's hand during the surgery. Every patient is less injured than VP or a patient, so no surgical injury on the brain, spine, vessels, and abdominal organ. Small amount of intraoperative <coughs> bleeding are expected. Few medication required during this procedure. So less possibility of severe complications are expected during and after elevation under local anesthesia is modified NLA. Because of suffering of the patient to maintain lateral position with almost alert wakefulness, the LP shunt under local anesthesia must be finished within one hour. So we recommend general anesthesia if it takes more than one hour. For operation time shortening, we use some good method and tools. We use operated surgical trap. It's designed by Dr. Kuana. We use this blunt scalp Fukushima hook for retracting and pulling up rectal muscle and peritoneal membrane. This is last slide. Local anesthesia, anesthesia with such sufficient sedation and analgesia could be easily performed for LP shunt procedure. To prevent particular pain after LP shunting, we could confirm the absence of pain under local anesthesia. Thank you very much. Congratulations for the good result of uh, LP shunt web page and the local <coughs> anesthesia. Now, this paper is open for discussion. Please uh, give a, a question or a suggestion. Um, you said uh, short time is required in this method and the uh, uh, problem is prolonged surgery. And you said that from surgery that can be anticipated preoperatively. Uh, how do you predict that from surgery? Problem uh, surgery. Prolonged. 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 Surgery. Yes. How? How do you select? Prolonged you, surgery. You said that uh, ah. prolonged surgery can be anticipated preoperatively. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you? Uh, uh, how do you know that? Pro prolonged surgery. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be pa patient uh, or, um, or, uh, old, uh, so uh, but the space are uh, very narrow, mm -hmm. so uh, confirmation of the spinal casita inside is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we decide uh, scoliosis uh, patient are uh, uh, ex yeah. You operate such a patient in the uh, uh, general anesthesia, that patient. Uh, yeah. General. Oh, uh, but. Uh, under general anesthesia, such patient is difficult also. Uh, so we recommend we be or be shunt. How about the question? 
Okay, thank you, Dr. Tauha. Thank you very much. I move on the next paper. The paper is uh, Dr. Kaguchi from Nagaoka Red Cross Hospital. The title is uh, Interoperative ABR Monitoring for Patients' Personal Findings After Autox Fields. Uh, please start with Dr. Kaguchi. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, there is a uh, mis uh, misprint and no AVM uh, AMR is corrected. Thank you. <coughs> uh, I'm from uh, Niigata, Japan. Uh, uh, this year is a bad cold and the bed is much snow. This is our hospital. <coughs> Uh, introduction. Uh, two, uh, the two treatment option, uh, uh, options most widely considered are uh, repeated uh, Botox injection or microplastic compression surgery. Botox treatment are uh, minimally invasive, but repeated injection may induce permanent weakness in the patient muscle. In our experience, over 15, 95% of patients are cured is microplastic surgery. And another three to five percent have significantly reduced spasms. Introverted ABR monitoring, MR monitoring has been created with greatly enhancing the safety of MVD. <coughs> Our overall surgical result: 216 cases. All the case, all the case non ABR monitor to 1993, uh, 16, uh, 67 cases. Excellent 72%, poorest 23%. And uh, AMR monitoring cases, 156 cases, 95% excellent, 3% poor excellent. A poor case uh, is uh, 3%. And two group, uh, between two group, uh, excellent and poor significant difference. In our institute, several patients propose MVD after few Botox treatment or permanent cure. We identified poor MR recording cases in those cases. We, we compared the preoperative Botox treatment cases with no Botox cases by interoperative MR monitoring findings. Consecutive 169 cases. Group A, non preoperative Botox treatment, 44 cases. Group B, preoperative Botox treatment case, 25 cases. Two groups, a parameter, no significant difference. Mean age, mean duration, sex, size. Surgical treatment, excellent cases, no significant difference. Our intraoperative MR monitoring and supermaximal stimulation zymatic branch. Upper, upper branch stimulation, DMR monitored uh, orbiculus oils. MR recording uh, by a lower uh, mental, mass, uh, mental muscle. A lower branch stimulation, DMR monitoring and mental mass, and MR uh, recording by orbiculus oils. Typical intraoperative MR. Group A. A preoperative recording. And upper branch stimulation and DMR of the class of always. MR and mental mice. Lower branch of stimulation and MR and recording of the class of always. Direct motor and mental mice. And intraoperative uh, recording and uh, at MVT, MR uh, disappear, MR disappear, and dual closure, post operative, uh, and MR disappear, disappear. Group B, Botox 20 times, 
appear to be like this uh, in this schema. Uh, this is the normal state and CSF into the dramatic and this yellow one is spinal cord and this purple one is paravertebral venous plexus. Sorry. Uh, Overdrive causes low intradural pressure in the upper cervical vertebrae and leads to dilation of paravertebral venous plexus. And this causes compression of the rosac and present myelopathy. Uh, we present a case, 67 year old female. She underwent VP shunt for obstructive hyocephalus due to acadeptal stenosis, which is also called LOVA. And she, uh, she underwent VP shunt uh, when she was 42 years old, that is 25 years ago. And here is her head CT. Uh, VP shunt from the anterior horn of uh, lateral ventricles. And she was suffered numbness in bilateral hand and these symptoms gradually got worse. In her initial leg on MRI, there are cervical canal stenosis at C4, 5 and C6, 7 and dilation of paravertebral venous plexus with compression of the spinal cord showed in this purple color. In her initial neck MRI, uh, sorry. there is no evishan or jugular vein stenosis in her angiography. At first, she underwent laminoplasty for cervical canal stenosis and her symptoms once improved. However, the symptoms reoccurred and worsened. She suffered from unstable gait, hand clumsiness, and numbness in bilateral fingers and soles, as in this picture. Sagittal image of Miela CT showed that there is no restenosis in her cervical canal. But venous plexus dilation, as we noticed before laminoplasty, was still seeing. A purple one is venous plexus and this yellow one is the spinal cord. So this is our diagnosis. Myelopathy due to massive epidural venous plexus caused by over of CSF after VP shunt for obstructive hydrocephalus due to acadectal stenosis. And how to treat for this? We consider these two patterns. The first plan is only a programmable bulb implantation to raise her intracranial pressure. However, this plan just only makes slight enlargement of lateral ventricles and there's the risk of uh, recurrence of headache due to acute hydrocephalus. And the second one is ETV. This can affect directly on venous plexus dilation by CSF flow through the bottom of third ventricle here. So we chose this plan. As our plan, we performed ETV by using rigid endoscopy. We added a programmable shunt bulb implantation just in case adjusted to high pressure. On the CT scan, cervical paravertebral venous engorgement improved immediately and her spinal cord got no more round shape after the operation. And her symptoms also markedly improved. And now move to the discussion. And this poorly known complication after CSF shunt was initially reported in 1998 by Dr. Miyazaki, named Miyazaki syndrome. Caruso reported almost the same case and he monitored ICP of the patient and make sure that there are CSF hypotension. In this case, uh, the patient was not shunt dependent, so the shunt was closed 
and got improvement of venous plexus swelling and disappearance of symptoms. And he also searched for the same cases and showed these six cases, demonstrated that replacement to the programmable shunt or closing shunt are effective for Yazaki syndrome. This time in our case, the underlying disease was obstructive hydrocephalus due to acaductal stenosis, so we chose ETV for this situation. ETV can make direct effect for venous plexus dilation induced by CSF over drainage in the case of obstructive hydrocephalus. In conclusion, we report the first case of CSF over drainage treated by ETV, adding to shunt replacement. We suggest ETV would be a useful treatment option for myelopathy due to massive paravertebral venous plexus after the treatment of, of obstructive hyocephalus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Doctor, for the nice presentation. And congratulations for the success of the treatment of uh, this uh, complex uh, pathology. Thank you. Uh, I'm afraid uh, this is a little bit difficult to understand the pathology, but uh, uh, the paper is uh, now open for discussion. Do you have any uh, question or comment? Uh, please, President. I'm Dr. Jinochi. Uh, thank you very much for showing us a very uh, Very uh, difficult, difficult to understand the case, and but uh, 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 over drainage, CSF over drainage. Um, why, why people uh, just CSF drainage can make uh, dilatation of the venous system and the venous compress the uh, spinal cord, so it would be a very strong pressure. So, is there any uh, mechanism to uh, just compensation? Compensation is cannot be uh, mm -hmm. understood. So, is there any check check valve mm -hmm. mechanism mm -hmm. or some? Do you have uh, any ideas? Yes, the mechanism is not uh, clearly known, but uh, I think that uh, long over drainage causes this uh, phenomenon. And I think that intradural, uh, intracranial veins uh, may also be dilated. However, uh, uh, it is located in uh, intradural sac, so uh, the de degree of dilation would be very small, and uh, so the uh, it uh, doesn't reach to the. Uh, neurological deterioration. Uh, so, so in this case, uh, uh, bridging vein and cortical vein also enlarged. Uh, probably. Uh, uh, but uh, only if the complex myelopathy occurred in the high soft core. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you very much. So, it's a good question. The mechanism of the engorging of the venous plexus is very important for the treatment. Please, please. Dr. Nakagawa, at the time of laminoplasty, did you notice that engorgement of the venous system? Uh, we, different from uh, there the, is uh, an engorgement of you the venous that? plexus, but uh, at first we uh, operated by laminoplasty and the uh, symptoms once improved, but uh, the, the symptoms reoccurred and we did ETV. But, uh, at the time of operation, operation, you noticed that completely different pathology.
praise start. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd like to talk about Shion Lan Hek to me with that fusion for retrodont issue tumor. Retrodont issue tumor is classified into two categories with or without Atlanta shell instability, AAI. Uh, the etiology is a mechanical stress on Atlanta shell joint caused a repeated tears of the transverse ligament leading to the reactive mass formation. Transoral trans section is a uh, traditional procedure and uh, currently a uh, posterior fusion is a faster choice. Uh, on, the other, on the other hand, uh, posterior decompression with a fusion for patients with a severe AI has been reported uh, recently. Now, uh, treatment is controversial in these cases. The purpose is to report outcomes of C1 lamectomy without fusion for retrodont tissue tumor uh, without AI. The materials. Three patients underwent C1 lamectomy without fusion. Uh, this graph shows uh, each patient's past history. Study design is a retrospective chart review. Uh, to assess AI, uh, we use instability index and more than 20% means instable and the Atlanta dental interval ADI uh, was measured. Uh, to assess uh, mass size, uh, maximal thickness and mass reduction rate uh, was calculated. To evaluate the cellularity of neuropathy, we use JOA and uh, this uh, recovery rate. Case 1. 85-year-old male, uh, he has past history of laminoplasty. Instability index was 12.2% and preoperative ADI at flexland extension was 4.7 and 2.3 mm. Mass thickness and uh, GOS score. Uh, 18 months after surgery, uh, there is no ADI progression and the mass reduction rate was uh, 9.4% and the GRA recovery rate was 12, uh, 27%. Case 2, 78-year-old female. Uh, she has a past history of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, 15 months after surgery, uh, ADI was also same and the mass reduction rate was 13.36% and the GO recovery rate was 63%. Last, a uh, 77 year old male. Uh, he has past history of lumbar canal stenosis. Uh, 13 months after surgery, uh, ADI was almost the same and the uh, mass reduction rate was 5.9% and the GO recovery rate was 47%. In summary, uh, the mean age was 80 and the insta mean instability index was 5.5%. Uh, there was no ADI progression. Uh, mass reduction was right. Uh, mean JOA recovery rate was uh, 46%. And the mean follow-up time was about uh, 16 months. Discussion. Uh, this chart is comparison of surgical procedure. Uh, posterior fusion is appropriate for patients with AI uh, and must uh, show a spontaneous reduction. Uh, the disadvantage is uh, uh, ROM disturbance and the risk of injury to VA with screw. Uh, Advantage is of posterior decompression uh, is less invasive and iron preservation, but this procedure is inferior to uh, posterior fusion about mass reduction. This chart is uh, a comparison of a previous report about posterior de decompression without fusion. Uh, 
there is a, a few cases uh, of uh, AI progression after surgery. <coughs> the normal reduction uh, in some in some cases not show no some reduction uh, mass reduction, uh, but a neurological improvement uh, can be seen in, in all cases. Uh, Shiwanagnotomy is considered to be the therapeutic option, but a long-term follow-up is needed. Conclusion: Shiwanagnotomy does not cause AI progression. Uh, no patients showed mass enlargement, and all patients demonstrated neurological improvement. A minimally invasive Shiwanagnotomy is one of the therapeutic options for retrodontal tumor without severe AI. Thank you. Thank you. The next nice, nice presentation. And Dr. Naga. Dr. Naga. At the time of the operation, did you try to reduce the uh, uh, post odontoid mass or just uh, you didn't touch? Uh, we didn't touch. You didn't touch. I have a, a patient with same kind of situation, we did decompression and partial removal without fusion. But postoperatively, the neurologically didn't he didn't improve. So that's the reason why we went back and put a screw and posterior fixation and mass disappeared quickly. So you have to follow this kind of patient because you may end up with posterior fixation. And nowadays we have you know, good screws and so forth so that posterior fixation is not that uh, dangerous anymore. You, know, you, have, you have to be careful about that. So I think follow up is very important. Thank you, comment. And other question? So thank you, no And, and next speaker is uh, Taka, uh, Takahisa uh, Kaneko from uh, Kojinkai, uh, Hokkaido Ono Memorial Hospital. And the title is Me Open of Weak Lumbar Lateral uh, Interbody Fusion Without the Compression for the Treatment of Postal or Prostate. Whatever collapse with neurological deficit. Uh, Dr. Takahisa, please start. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I would like to talk about obliquolateral interbody fusion without decompression for the treatment of osteoporotic bilateral collapse with neurological damage. Uh, introduction: uh, Delayed neurological deficit with osteoporotic collapse is caused by retro parts form fragment as well as vertebral instability. So reconstructive surgery are usually required and however because of medical complication and poor bone quality associated with elderly patients, the optimal procedure remains controversial. So uh, the purpose of my presentation is to propose a new minimum invasive anterior and posterior fusion 
with the neural decompression using ORIF. Uh, I'll show you about the surgical procedure first. Uh, the first step is stabilization with collapsed bat variety to put ORIF cage from <coughs> lower inter space and then uh, press upper intervertebral space. Putting ORIF cage from lower intervertebral space will make upper intervertebral space narrow and, and will achieve pressing ORIF cage upper intervertebral space. The second step is fixation with PPS from one level above to one level below the collapsed vertebra. I will show a case of L3 vertebral collapse and L4 and 5 spinal cancer stenosis. Uh, local chromatic angle is improved minus 10 degree to 7 degree and lumbar lordosis area is improved 21 degree to 32 degree. Uh, she and uh, she ended up to walk by herself. And next case, uh, our area vertebral collapse. Uh, local uh, local chaotic angle improved 10 degree to 18 degree. Uh, lumbar lordosis is improved 32 degree to 41 degree and. Sagittal vertebral axis is remarked in perfect 61cm to 16cm. She is able to walk by herself. Um, this demographics, uh, this study has a small number of cases and the short for a period. Of graphic data, the mean of graphic time was 278 minutes. The estimate blood loss only 24 milliliter. Uh, we discussed the relationships between this surgical procedure and clinical outcome, complications, radical graphic data, such as the local cavitic angle, lumbar lordosis, and surgical vertebral axis. Uh, all patients showed neurology recovery. Visual angle scale of low back pain and sad pain were 7.3 before surgery and 1.0 at the final follow up. Uh, one case explained the uh, major complication of correction loss, and one case had a minor complication of side pain, transient side pain. Uh, this is a case of uh, Partial loss. Uh, he suffered Parkinson's disease, and and she has a larger SBA, uh, 185 cm, and rash source of carpal 62 degree. Uh, she has a severe uh, AS, so we we should uh, do a short fusion. So the local. Uh, the angle is changed uh, my, uh, minus 21 degree to 8 degree post operatively, but uh, minus 13 degree finally. And the number of loads is changed uh, 90 degree to 40 degree, uh, 47 degree post operatively, but 23 degree finally. Uh, mean local chaotic angle uh, was minus 7 degree before surgery and improved to 10.8 degree after surgery. Finally, it decreased to 4.6 degree. And mean error was 24 degree before surgery and improved to 39.3 degree after surgery. Finally, it decreased 32 degrees. Mean SBA was 100 mm before surgery and improved to 67 mm at the final floor. Uh, this data is strongly affected by the sad case with correction loss. Uh, in discussion, uh, until now, various surgical treatments of late surgical deficit in patients with osteoporotic vertebral collapse are presented. 
uh, arterial reconstruction reported by Dr. Sudov and uh, recently uh, posterior uh, indirect neural decompression and uh, anterior augmentation by uh, PKP uh, 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 In comparison of clinical uh, characteristics and outcome between different surgical types and other surgical methods, our uh, brain type was similar. Uh, the other surgical types but interoperative blood loss was significantly lower in your method. And no difference, no significant difference was observed in chaotic correction angle and loss of correction. And in our case, uh, no, no major complication was found. Conclusion. Uh, all results of the compression for the treatment of osteoporotic vertebral collapse with neurological deficits may be less invasive, may obtain enough correction of kyphosis, uh, has only minor complication. However, uh, in case of resistance via lateral kyphosis, a need for correction surgery. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Professor has presentation. And uh, some questions and questions on the floor. Uh, I am from School of University. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, unfortunately, I have no experience of the OLE, but I also believe that it is uh, less invasive for the elderly person. Uh, my question is two, two questions. One question is that uh, what is the differences between the uh, surgical procedure of non non osteoporotic cases and the osteoporotic cases, the other body procedure? And then the second question is that do you need don't you need some kind of uh, uh, the collapsed uh, vertebra? I mean, the, do you just put the uh, screw and the finish on? <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, the first question: uh, uh, the difference of uh, between uh, normal or and uh, uh, this or procedure. Uh, uh, in osteoporotic cases, uh, we should uh, do firstly uh, low, uh, put the cage uh, in the lower bone because the uh, upper bone is wide. So, all cage has a max protein height. So, we have to uh, we have to put the first uh, <coughs> lower vertebra and uh, make a narrow uh, upper vertebra and put the uh, and then put the upper into vertebral space. Uh, it stabilizes. I think so. And. This, uh, Sorry. <laughs> Second question is that: what, uh, Do you need some uh, some uh, surgery for the collapsed uh, vertebra? Ah. Uh, we are uh, we use a uh, uh, ten parties, uh, two or three months uh, before a surgery, and uh, and uh, uh, in operation we. Uh, <coughs> Uh, put, putting the cage uh, at the edge, edge of the vertebra, because uh, the edge is very hard. Uh, be, so, sorry, uh, edge is hard uh, than the center of the vertebra. Okay. Dr. Nak. Sorry, I'm part of the uh, <laughs> also about that. I'm asking you one question. Uh, in a case like this, I think it's uh, in some case you better do a BKP at the same time. And also, in what situation you can avoid decompression? Because if patient has a progressive uh, paraparesis, you wonder you know, which way to go. Thank you for uh, that question. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, BKP, uh, uh, 
and uh, we have to set, uh, we select the PKP uh, at the documentation uh, as a case of uh, no neurological deficit because the uh, only PKP uh, cannot uh, correct the <coughs> chaotic angle. Okay, um, thank you, Dr. Takahisa. Thank you. So, we uh, close this session. Thank you, Dr. Nakase, Dr. Watanabe. Now, uh, let me introduce... Sarah Ward,